Today we're taking a look at a new power station from Jackery. This is the Home Power 3600 Plus. Now this unit shares a lot of similarities with the Home Power 3000 that we took a look at a couple months ago. But as you can see, they've incorporated a handle and wheels which make it a little bit more portable. This has a little bit larger battery than that. The capacity on this is 3,584 watt hours. So basically, 3.5 kilowatt hours in this unit. And it weighs about 78 pounds, I think is the weight on this thing. Uh, the cool thing though, is that it can output continuously at 3,600 watts, and it's got a dedicated TT30 plug. So we can plug a travel trailer into this or a camper. Uh, and you could even connect this to your house through uh, something like a power inlet box or a transfer switch uh, with the limitation of knowing that we only have 120 volts here. It's not 240. Now it can be expanded through these ports right here on the side to be able to use a, uh, a switch that connect, combines two units, and then you can get split phase 240 volt power, but you will need a second unit to do that. Now this also has the ability to expand to additional battery packs for this many total kilowatt hours, which is quite impressive. So if you want to, you can expand the system and just start with this base unit. So back to our output capacity on this, like I said, 3,600 watts. Now this isn't so large that you're going to be able to power your whole house, obviously. Uh, if we were to use a, a generator inlet box and uh, try to power your whole panel, you're only going to really be able to power half of it unless you get creative with some adapters. But obviously any of your 240 volt loads you will not be able to power with a single unit by itself. So we're gonna go take this and plug this into my camper because we can turn on the air conditioning and the electric water heater at the same time and we should be able to max out uh, what this thing is able to output and, uh, and kind of give that a test. Now it is able to also take in some solar. So over here, uh, in addition to our AC port, like I was saying, and our DC expansion port for our additional batteries. We can also connect two solar panels and they're limited to 500 watts of input on each. So what they really want you to pair this with is the Solar Saga 500 panels uh, because those are going to pretty close uh, to max out the solar input. Uh, we can get a total of a thousand watts of solar into this thing. So the solar input is not a crazy amount. It's really not designed to be able to continuously stay up with its charging. I wish that we had a higher voltage input, uh, something like the Jackery Explorer 5000 Plus. That thing is so awesome in the way that we can bring a solar array like that one back there into that unit. Now I wouldn't expect to be able to bring in that much solar to this thing, but to be able to use panels that are not made by Jackery would be really nice. And it is possible if we get the correct adapters and we have the right voltages, uh, but they definitely are uh, trying to direct people more towards using the Jackery panels, which is understandable. Uh, and the ecosystem uh, that they've built makes it really simple. So if you don't really wanna have to understand the voltages of your panels and uh, all of the different factors that go into that, then this is pretty plug and play and you should be able to uh, have a system that just works. Now for being the lightest battery station with this output in its category, uh, the build quality feels pretty nice. The plastics don't really flex a lot. Uh, it seems pretty good. I mean, there's a little bit of flex to it. Uh, one thing I did notice is on the sides of the unit, I'll see if I can show this to you guys. We can actually see the internal components pretty clearly from the outside. So I definitely wouldn't want to expose this thing to moisture. You can see all the, all the components in here. And it's like that on both sides. So, I mean, it's fine. This has to have airflow being pulled through it, obviously, for cooling. But same thing on this side as well. You can see the 
some wires and stuff in there. That actually kind of looks cool, but it seems like normally you can't really see inside of the unit quite as much. Now taking a quick look at the bottom of the unit, obviously we have the wheels there, and then we've got these big rubber feet here and here, which allows it to kind of grip the floor when it is sitting um, in one spot. So it's not gonna really like slide around. It doesn't have casters like some of the bigger versions like the Explorer 5000 Plus, but it doesn't really need it since this thing is under 80 pounds. It's not that hard to move around. Back of the unit, we just have our handle that pops up right here, as well as the sticker with all of the specifications. So that kind of wraps up the physical design of the Home Power 3600 Plus. Let's go plug this thing into the camper and see if we can max out that output. I don't know if any of you guys have seen jump seats like this in the back of a Tesla, but it's actually really cool. It's a factory option all the way through 2020, I believe. We're at 100%. Plug that in. Turn on the AC. First, start the water heater, Oli. Uh, electric water heater, okay? So, 1400 watts while we turn on the air conditioning, we should have a pretty good inrush current. So, go ahead and turn on the air conditioning now. There we go, 2,500. So we could pull quite a bit more yet. So Oli's gonna go plug in this hot plate. There we go. That looks pretty good. Uh, let's go ahead and turn the lights on, turn all of the lights on, and that should get us close to over the top. So we're almost 200 watts over. Now we are 200 watts over the max capacity. So let's see how long this thing will go for. There, it finally just kicked out. So it is kind of nice that if you do overload it, uh, it definitely is able to handle it for a few seconds. I don't know how many seconds that was. I put it on the screen for you guys. Uh, but let's go ahead and see if we can restart this thing while all those loads are turned on. So we know that the air conditioning is on. We know that the electric water heater is on and that hot plate. So if it can start all those things at the same time, that's gonna be some really good surge wattage. So let's go ahead and give it a try. Ooh. Dude, that was a pretty good spike. Yeah, it has really good starting power. Now, one very notable thing that is missing from the Home Power 3600 is any sort of 12 volt output. We don't have an Anderson power pole connection. We don't have a standard car socket. Both of those are missing. And I guess the reason that they probably did that is because this isn't really geared towards camping. It's geared towards home power. And I guess in most cases, you don't really need 12 volts for your house in an emergency. Um, but there are a lot of 12 volt things that are out there, 12 volt accessories that are nice to be able to run. So I think that that is something if it, I don't know how much weight it would have added, but it seems like it's something that could have been included. Now today's a little bit overcast, but we do have our two 500 watt Solar Saga panels laid out here, feeding into our Home Power 3600 Plus. So if we take a look on the display right now, we are bringing in a total of about 200 watts. Now, uh, earlier we were bringing in closer to 300, and as the sun comes in and out of the clouds, we could, in theory, see up to 500 watts from each of those panels uh, in ideal uh, conditions. Uh, so we're gonna leave this thing out here, and then we'll uh, track and look at the app later and see how many kilowatt hours or how many watt hours we were able to produce, even on this overcast day. So right now, it's about uh, 11 a.m., a little bit before 11 a.m. And so we'll give this several hours and see what our solar output looks like. Now, like I referenced earlier, we could set these up in this way, except for have our power station located inside of a camper or inside of your house and then run your solar cable through the window or some other opening and then have this set up as a UPS, so that this would be plugged into 120 volts from the wall. And then your appliance, say your refrigerator, be plugged into one of these outlets. And by doing that, uh, we would use all of the solar to supply the load and any amount that we still need from the wall. 
will be supplemented that way. So you will have continual power, but you will be at least partially or maybe even completely powering your appliances connected to this. Now, real quick, let's look at what's inside of the Jackery app when it comes to options for the 3600 plus. If we click on that particular device, you can see we have a real-time readout of our percentage as well as the temperature of the battery, which is 34.3 degrees Celsius. Uh, input is zero watts. If we had panels connected, we'd be able to see how much wattage we're bringing in. And we can see that our AC port is turned on and that it's running at 119.9 volts, 60 hertz. It also shows that to us on the display here, which is kind of cool, the exact voltage that is being outputted up from the unit. Now here we can also turn on our DC ports, it looks like. So we can turn on, if we have USB devices, we could turn that on remotely. Uh, and then we've got our screen, which we can set to two hours. We're gonna do that because it's annoying when it's constantly turning off. Or we can just turn it off entirely. So that works really good. Go back to two hours. And then it will keep track of your generation. Now you do have to have it connected to Wi-Fi uh, continuously or some kind of connectivity so that it is able to track your total generation. Uh, so I definitely wanna give that a try. Now here in the charging, section you can see we've got fast charging mode so it'll always charge as fast as possible quiet charging mode that'll keep it under 30 decibels while charging or customize which i think i'd leave it here because we can drag the setting all the way down to 100 watts all the way up to 1700 so that's actually pretty handy uh fine being able to fine tune that is really useful because sometimes you're plugged into a power source that is limited like a little generator or you just don't want to pull quite as much wattage. Energy saving mode, you can see we can uh, choose how long um, the device will stay on with no load. Uh, right now it's 12 hours and you can also change it to never. So if you needed it to always be on, you can do that. Working mode, you can see we've got battery settings uh, so we can fully use it, which is what we're gonna do zero to 100%, uh, but we could reduce that range. So if you wanted to go 10% to 90%, that might increase the lifespan of the battery a little bit. Uh, Self-powered mode maximizes the use of solar energy and reduces reliance on the grid electricity by prioritizing solar stored solar energy. Uh, must be connected both to solar panels and the grid simultaneously with load power limited by bypass power. So in this mode, uh, we'd only be able to have uh, 1400 watts passing through because when this is in uh, UPS mode and we have it connected to the house and to loads at the same time, your total wattage that you can put through it is 1440 watts. Uh, but if we had that happening while having solar panels connected, uh, it would just offset the energy um, that you're, you're supplying through that UPS feature. That's actually really cool because we could, in theory, have our solar panels connected to this and just continuously offset uh, a little bit of energy because of those solar panels being set outside. And then you can see we, can, we have our battery range that it will use uh, during that time, which is pretty cool. And then we have a charging plan as well. So this is for uh, selecting when you want it to charge. So if we have off-peak energy rates, we can use this feature to charge when electricity is cheap and discharge when electricity is expensive. So uh, the self-powered mode is actually really cool if you're in a situation where you wanna be able to utilize some solar, uh, you can only get a thousand watts into this thing, but that will add up over time. So we probably could have a refrigerator or a freezer or several appliances that are totally powered by solar as long as you have those solar panels in a good spot device specifications so we can see all of the details for the device 3600 watts total output 18 watts for USB a 100 watts for USB C oh interesting look it lists a carport 10 amps max but it doesn't actually have one so that's kind of funny uh, AC input 15 amps max up to 120 volts uh, our solar here's our solar specs so we can do 16 to 60 volts, two of them, at 12 amps max, double to 24 amps, slash 100. 1,000. 1,000, okay, sorry, it was over, slash 1,000 watts max, okay, that makes sense. And then on our car input, 12 to 16 volts, eight amps max, and that's pretty useful 
uh, for when you use the, the car adapter and it'll plug into that same DC 8020 port. Now I want to note this specifically, this is our charge and discharge temperature. Uh, I have not seen our charge temperatures that low on very many products where we can charge it at all the way down to four below zero Fahrenheit, uh, all the way up to 113 degrees. Uh, most of the time that charging is limited to closer to freezing, so 32 degrees or higher, and the discharge goes down to like minus four. So that is really interesting. And then the user manual is located right in the app as well, which is super handy. Well, it's about 6 p.m. now, and we've gained a decent bit of solar energy throughout the day, but it stayed pretty much completely overcast all day long. But we can go down here and take a quick peek at our generation, and it looks like in the end we ended up with about 1.3 kilowatt hours worth of, of energy production today so far. Uh, so not a whole lot on this very overcast day, but did a really good job of tracking it all day long so we'd be able to look back and see what we produced over time. So let me know, what do you guys think about the Jackery Home Power 3600 Plus? I think it definitely has a specific use case where you've got it the lightest possible 3.5 or 3.6 kilowatt hour uh, portable power station. As long as you don't need uh, that 12 volt output, uh, I would say this might be a good option to consider. I think right now they're about 1600 bucks uh, once you uh, factor in some of the deals that they've got going. So definitely take a peek at it. You, know, you could de definitely look at some of the competition out there if you want more solar input or consider the Explorer 5000 Plus. Now that thing is kind of a, a large power station comparison. It's a five kilowatt hour power station, but the amount of solar you can bring into that thing is really impressive. Uh, but yeah, thanks so much for watching. Links in the description if you guys are interested in checking out the Home Power 3600 Plus. Thanks so much for watching. We'll talk to you guys in the next one.